Businesses today, corporations, are little more than piles of money with a singular goal of becoming bigger piles of money. And unfortunately, a lot of us through our careers, we get caught up in these. We have bills to pay. We have to put food on the table. We've got mortgages to pay. So we have to work in these places. And we try and do the best we can. But the system itself, uh, I think, has to be looked at. Maybe there's a better way to run business where money isn't the only thing. Maybe it's not profit and then people and planet below here. Maybe it's people, planet, profit side by side. I got what you need. I grew up in my early childhood in a, in a very wealthy environment. And my parents separated, and then we fell on some very hard times. Um, so we went from a point in time where we had lots of cars and, and, and lots of wealth to a point where we weren't able to you know, basically barely put food on the table. But what I learned from that, I learned that money and wealth is, is not the key to happiness that people think it is. People think they're going to go into this corporate world and, and make tons of money and it'll give them joy. But at the end of the day, a lot of these jobs, a lot of these corporations end up consuming us. They end up consuming our time. They end up consuming our lives. For what? The reason I became an engineer is because my grades were really high. And when you have high grades, you're expected to be either an engineer or a doctor, uh, where I come from. So I became an engineer. <laughs> When I moved to the U.S. for my uh, bachelor's, my first year, I would say two or three years, were incredibly hard. I missed my family. I missed my friends. I missed the streets that I used to walk on. I missed the, the street seller who used to sell you know, mangoes during the summer, everything that I was familiar with. When you leave everything behind in search for a new life, it's a great burden for a person to take. But it also strengthens you, it forms you, and it teaches you how to build new connections and new bridges and make new friends. But at the same time, not to let go of who you were. My husband's work brought us to Cambridge, and we moved from the US for a two-year project, actually. And we ended up loving it so much that we ended up living here. I've lived in four different countries. Uh, Cambridge is actually the 15th or 16th city that I've lived in. And we enjoy the life here, and we like the pace. Um, we think it's more important to establish some roots uh, and give your children a sense of who they are and where they belong. The first day that we landed, I remember my wife and I at the immigration counter. The immigration person looked at our passports and they said, oh, you're coming from the US? I said, yes. I said, you're an engineer? Yes. You need to go to the back room. I was like, oh no, something's wrong with our papers. We're in trouble. So we go to the back room, the immigration officer says, you're an engineer and you're qualified, you're educated, why are you coming here on a work permit? We got really nervous. She both, she and I started looking at each other saying, oh my God, what, what happened to our immigration papers, to our work permit? She said, no, no, you should apply for immigration. You should live in Canada. We need qualified people like you to help us build the country. That one day, we really started to understand the difference um, in kind of the Canadian culture and the environment you can grow within the Canadian society, grow within the Canadian culture and the environment here, um, maintain your identity, but be a strong part of kind of local community at the same time. So, you know, we might be celebrating uh, Eid at the same time as we're celebrating Christmas with our neighbors and we're having Thanksgiving with them and we're having fireworks for Canada Day and we're, you know, celebrating Victoria Day. At the same time, celebrating the other events. I guess it's twice as much reason to party and have fun. I had managed financial budgets and uh, was responsible for delivering productivity for a $400 million budget. Um, when I manage plants, I've had between 400 and even 800 people working for me in the past. So very senior positions, um, 
lots of hours, uh, very stressful. <laughs> My boss once brought me in. She said, you know, Helmi, uh, we're doing a lot of great things for the uh, environment. We're conserving energy. But this whole sustainability movement, we need somebody to really spearhead this effort and look into it and, and lead the charge in it. So I said, can you give me 30 days to really study and understand, you know, what this is? So I went away and I read every book. I read, I think, a book a day. And I saw every uh, video I could find, every material I could find. And my jaw dropped. And, you know, I came from the traditional business world of we just have to maximize profit and we have to do this. And, of course, do it the right way and, you know. But when I started to understand what is happening to our planet and I started to understand the footprint of business, it really shook my value system uh, and it reset it. And even though I enjoyed what I did and I enjoyed the people that I worked with, the singular pursuit of profit uh, in business at large is something that really started to trouble me. Um, it seemed as though business was really just about making money and environment and people and all the issues that we work with are were a distant second or a distant third even there has to be more to business than that i thought we can't leave it up to nonprofits to solve all the world's issues that's only two percent of the world's economy what about the other 98 percent i learned that two days of global military spending can end extreme poverty on this planet is it possible to use business to drive social change in the world? Can we use the 98% of the world's economy and the world's wealth to make a difference? enterprises are businesses that have dedicated themselves to solving social or environmental issues. That's how you understand who they are. I think that it's just because my husband and I love drinking tea so much and I think out in when you look out in the market they're not enough good quality made products so that made us go and design our own our own line of products. We said you know what let's just do this we have to make our own things and then once we were making designing our own stuff, we said there has to be a purpose behind it. We can't just do it for the profit. And we both of us love to give back. So we had to find a way to give back to the environment, to the country, to the people. And that's what inspired us to start, start our Safe Water project. When our second daughter was a year old, um, she traveled overseas to visit her grandparents. And while she was there, she was affected by waterborne illness. And she ended up uh, in hospital, uh, in intensive care for three days. And we're fortunate that, uh, you know, the best care was available and she was able to um, come out of that and face it. But a lot of parents don't have that good fortune today. Almost, uh, almost 800 million people around the world don't have access to safe drinking water. 4,000 children die every day. Every day because of something simple as not having pure water to drink. Less than 30 kilometers from Cambridge, there are communities that don't have safe drinking water. I can tell you the solutions to all of these problems exist. If we can employ a simple solution, you know, that is designed for warm and temperate climates, you know, in other places, I can tell you there are solutions to those issues in Canada as well. I think what we need to find is the will. And sometimes it's political will to get the right people to sit and talk to each other once we decide, I think as people, what is important to us, we can make anything happen. So far, we've been able to fund over 50 to 60 million days of safe drinking water for people in the world. We're just about to do our largest project ever. And this project will basically nearly double that to over 100 million days of safe drinking water for people in the world. And my message to others is this, if a small company working out of Cambridge that started out of a laundry room can make this much of an impact in the world today, imagine if others joined us and they came along. I was
was actually um, in uh, in Africa doing some work there, and my friend asked me. He said, "Help me! You're doing all this work for you know people in Africa and children here. Are you paying your staff a living wage?" And I said, "Living wage? What's that?" He said, "Do you really think that people can live on 10.25 an hour? You know, we were paying more than 10.25." And I thought that was enough. Yeah. And I later learned what a living wage was, and you can't actually put food on your table. Forget about the luxuries of life and going on vacations, all that. No, you can't even pay for the basics. Utilities and food and clothing and for your kids, um, unless you make a living wage. Anything less than a living wage is living and working in poverty. You're the working poor. And I think as businesses, we have to sit back and think, is this the kind of local partner we want to be? It has to be in your heart to give. There is more than enough for everybody in this world. You just need to be able to share. And right now, these days, time, it seems to be is like the most precious thing and people are running after you. You have to take out that little bit of time in your life and be able to give back to the community and to the world. I tell them, here's a real reason I do this. I do this so I can sleep well at night for my own peace of mind. And then I tell them I do this because someday when I'm old and when I'm dying, I want my kids to love me, not just because I'm their dad, but because I was able to make a difference in people's lives. And I was able to show them that we can live our lives with a greater purpose. It's not all about consumption. It's not all about taking. It's about giving. And that real joy comes when you share joy, when you share smiles, when you put smiles on people's faces. So, you know, that's why we do this. And uh, that's why it's all about me, making me sleep well at night and die with a big smile on my face. That's what it's all about.